On today's podcast, we're going to talk about self-sabotage. Right. The things that we do that aren't necessarily in our best interest. Right. We are in early November. Yes. Uh, beginning of the last two months of the year. Yeah. Those busy, crazy months where we um, try to stay on our resolutions <laughs> That's and right. fail. That's um, right. These are the difficult months. These two months are difficult in terms of all the extra food and beverages and parties and family gatherings yep. that we're entering. Well, there's so many obligations and so many, our, our schedule becomes more and more full right. as, the, as the months progress. Right. So we have finished baseball season. We're beginning hockey season. College football season is winding down, but holiday season is, is, a, up. is upon us, yes. right? This is the month that we begin holiday season. And with that, um, we have all of these resolutions that we made yeah. what seems like just a few months ago, but was 10 months ago. Yeah. It was odd. I mean, I can't. Nobody it's can believe that 2019 is almost, already almost over, over. Right. <laughs> and so um, we enter these next two months and we found this lovely little article about why we self-sabotage. Yeah. And we thought, well, this is a good good time to do this. Okay? Absolutely. Um, why do we self-sabotage? Because when we started the year, we began with, uh, we don't call them resolutions. Right. Still. We, no. What We're just we setting call? goals. We set goals, right? And we set these goals and we do three or four things. We, we, we really make the commitment. This is going to be the year right. that I'm going to lose weight, run, yes. change jobs, build yeah. a new house, something. Yeah. Okay. So this is the year. Right. And to make sure we hold ourselves to that yeah. goal, mm -hmm. what do we do? We tell other people. Right. Right. Yeah. We, we, we write them down. Write them we, down. We, we, we do all those things that we need to do to set nice reminders, right. to, to hold ourselves accountable, to, right. to you, make sure that we stay on, on focus. You put that picture of your fat self on right. the refrigerator, right? <laughs> That's right. You write things on your bathroom mirror. You have post-it notes in your car. Yeah. And you, you tell other people so they'll hold you accountable right. for it. You yeah. do all these things because, by golly, this is the year that I'm going to do this. Yeah. This is the year that I'm going to quit smoking. This yeah. is the year that I'm going to take that vacation. Whether it's, whether it's quitting something or doing something, you're filled with resolve at the beginning of the year. And then somehow along the way, the whole thing comes apart. Yeah. Okay. And that's what we mean by why do we sabotage yeah. what seems to be a very worthwhile goal mm -hmm. and something we really, 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 really want. So why do we get in our own way? Yeah. Okay. Well, as it turns out, self-sabotage is built into our neurobiology. Okay. And I had never thought about it that way. Yeah. But it's really an interesting perspective because what she says is it's self-sabotage is tied to our survival, mm -hmm. our, 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 our existence. It's right. tied to our basic existence. And it's tied to it in two ways. One is it's tied to self-sabotage is tied to attaining our goals mm -hmm. right. and it's tied to avoiding threats. What our right. What our b brain does is it um, achieves goals. Right. It wants to attain goals because it makes us feel good. Right. Okay. And we want to avoid threats right. because that makes us feel good. Right. Okay. So we're always involved in this. It's a battle. Balance. Yeah. It's a battle of achieving goals and avoiding threats. Right. Okay. Now, as it turns out, both of those things make us feel good. Yeah. All right. So you can see where this is going. Right. All right. Yeah. Because attaining what we want feels good. Avoiding what we don't want makes us feel good. Makes, makes and sense. And in our brains, these are not two different systems. Mm -hmm. what, what she refers to it is it's, it's, it's the two sides of the same coin. coin. Right. So when you set a goal, mm -hmm. it's important to keep in mind that while you're trying to achieve that goal, you're also trying to avoid discomfort. Right. You, I remember one of our podcasts, we talked about 
every time you want to do something, mm -hmm. you set out to do something, you have to give something else right. up. Right. You have to sacrifice. Right. Change requires sacrifice. And we talked about it with the exercise, one of mm -hmm. the exercise programs that we interviewed the author. And yes, you can exercise, but that means you're taking an hour right. out of your life yeah. that must have been important to you in some way. Right. Maybe it was couch time, maybe it was drinking time, maybe but you're giving something up right. every time you set a goal. Right. So you always have this battle right. between these two things. Yeah. Now, the brain is after, I don't want to say pleasure, it's after satisfaction. It, right. wants, to, right. it wants to achieve some level of satisfaction, right. okay? Yeah. And so, as you set a new goal, you're always going to have, your brain is going to be battling between giving something up mm -hmm. and attaining something, right. okay? And it's that balance that we're after. So when she says it's built into our neurobiology, that's what she's talking about, yeah. is that the brain just wants to be satisfied. Yeah. If it gets more satisfaction from achieving the mm -hmm. goal than it does from giving something up, right. then achieve the goal. Right. But if it suddenly says, you're going to feel better if you do this, right. think about, now, if you've never been addicted to um, alcohol or tobacco anything, or anything, yeah. or gambling, if you've never been addicted, you, you might not appreciate that, but that's what addicts go yeah. through, is that I want to feel good, so I want to quit using drugs, but I want to feel good right now, so I want to use drugs. Right. And that's the battle that's always being waged. Right. Okay. Yeah, because every time, we, because change requires, um, because change requires that sacrifice, change mm -hmm. requires um, giving, giving up something, our, our body wants, as you said, it wants comfort. And you know, we had a, we did another podcast mm -hmm. where we talked about the difference between what's good for us and what's uh, what we're comfortable with. Right. Um, That's right. And many times we find a lot more um, pleasure with what's comfortable, even if it's not good for us. Mm -hmm. And so we want to go in that direction because it's easy. Right. Our, our right. body is used to it. Our body is very accustomed, for example, to coming home after work and just sitting on the couch or, you know, reclining back and just resting. That's, that's sort of our default. And so our body wants to do that. And we find a lot of comfort in that, even though it's not necessarily good for us. Mm -hmm. So to try to add in an exercise routine right. after work is really difficult because our body says, no, this is what we're supposed to do over here. We don't right. want to do that over there. Do you remember the exercise person? And he said he used to go home and eat mm -hmm. um, chocolate, yeah. right? He yeah. would go home, he Hershey's Kisses or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it was even very specific about the candy. Yeah. And he said that was his routine. Mm -hmm. He would get home from a stressful day. He would sit down on the sofa. He would eat some chocolate. It would make him feel better. Mm -hmm. That's what he had to give up. So right. here he is. He has found this thing that's so satisfying. Mm -hmm. That's what your brain wants. It right. wants to feel satisfied. And he had to give that up to go exercise. And right. it wasn't until the exercise right. gave him more pleasure than, than right. the, the couch right. time that he then switched from one to the other. Right, and that's where it really comes, becomes important that we, we find a routine and we stick to the routine regardless of that pleasure aspect of it. We, we, you have to get over that hump yeah. um, because it is a lot of work there mm -hmm. in that, um, you know, initially there's a lot of reinforcement to, right. to doing the work, um, but then there's that lull in, mm -hmm. in the immediate reinforcement and you, it's, that's where it's really going to require a lot of work. Right. Um, I had a friend a few months ago come over and she, uh, she's on this uh, real strict diet mm -hmm. and she was saying that she always wants to have dessert after a meal. Mm -hmm. She said, there's something about right. when I eat a meal, I always want to finish with dessert. Right. And she said, but we were told, I don't know, we told somebody in our class said that if you wait, I think 15 minutes, mm -hmm. if you can persevere for 15 minutes, mm -hmm. the craving will eventually go away. Mm -hmm. yeah. And it's another example of, yeah. I want this dessert because it, right. I, it, it will make me feel good. But if you wait, if you mm -hmm. get over the hump right. and wait 15 minutes, then the feeling of, okay, I made it mm -hmm. and I didn't have the dessert, then that fuels right. uh, pleasure as well. Yeah. And so um, you, have to, you have to work through these things right. and, and make, the, um, make the goal become more important, right. more satisfying. Because you yeah. yeah. you're always gonna have this battle. Yeah. Until until you develop the new routine. Right. Um, um, and and it takes thirty or sixty or ninety days to develop those routines. Yeah. I, I just got back from my trip mm -hmm. to Malaysia mm -hmm. and and 
was part of a, a conference there and uh, it was fantastic. Met some wonderful people uh, mm -hmm. while I was there. Saw some old friends uh, yeah. while we were there. Um, but one of the speakers right. um, talked about, uh, was talking about positive psychology mm -hmm. and he was talking about, you know, instead of recognizing and, and acknowledging and really focusing on weaknesses, mm -hmm. he talked about recognizing and focusing on our strengths. Right. And, and I think that it fits in very well with this because we do need to recognize our strengths. What are we, what are we good at? Mm -hmm. what, what's, um, you know, because when we recognize and we emphasize our, our strengths, and we, we work to build those, um, mm -hmm. you know, make them even stronger, it makes it so much easier to overcome the weaknesses. Right. You know, like if, if I can recognize my strengths, then I can mm -hmm. use those strengths to, to make some of the changes that I want to make That's right. without having to um, be so susceptible to the things mm -hmm. that will, you know, make me self-sabotage. That's right. So know that there's always this struggle. Right. I mean, that's the first thing is you have to understand that from a, from a neurobiological perspective, this is what your brain is doing. Right. It's always having this battle yeah. between do I want this or do I, do I want to get this or do I want to avoid this? Right. Wh which is going to win out? Because mm -hmm. they're, they're always going to be uh, present. Both mm -hmm. are always going to be present. Right. And so it's not easy right. to, to achieve these goals. I mean, it, it, when we say, why is it so difficult? In this case, why do we self-sabotage? We're really not self it's really not self-sabotaging. Right. It's just that we're giving in to the stronger urge. Right. Okay, yeah. whether you, whether you're talking about drugs or, you know, trying to set up exercise routine or mm -hmm. just trying to clean your house, it doesn't matter. Right. That's why it's so difficult because your brain is seeking both right. to avoid what it doesn't want or to get what it does want, right. and it's always going to be a battle. Right. Okay, and so I I appreciate what the speaker um, said. Yeah. Is that let's use let's use our ability. So. In this article, the author talks about these uh, four such abilities right. at the end of the article, and she has the acronym of L-I-F-E. And it's sort of cute, she says, why do we self-sabotage? Because life gets in the way. Right. Okay. What is life? L-I-F-E. Yeah. L stands for low or shaky self-concept. Right. Okay, we all know about that. Right. Yeah, and we've talked about that many times on the podcast before right. that, you know, many times the way in which we see ourselves and we view ourselves and we see, you know, whether we see ourselves as capable or uh, effective or efficient in being able to manage some of these changes mm -hmm. that we want to make or, you know, to be able to be the person that we see ourselves to be, mm -hmm. um, you know, it does come back to our, our self-concept, our, you know, our, our ego, uh, who right. we see ourselves as. Right. And, I'm, and I think somebody told me the other day um, that she quit smoking on her birthday, I mm -hmm. think is how she, uh, and I was really impressed because yeah. I thought, you just get to your birthday and you quit smoking. Yeah. I mean, that takes incredible self-control. Yeah. Um, how people do that. I had a friend who quit when he turned 40. He said, I'm going to, so he had his last cigarette mm -hmm. just before the clock struck midnight yeah. and he never smoked again. Yeah. I never had that guy. That's, that's, you have to have enough self concept mm -hmm. to say, yeah. I can do this. Right. Okay. I'm capable of doing it. Yeah. So the first thing, the L stands for low or shaky self-esteem, self-concept, yeah. self-worth. That's one okay. of the first thing that gets in the way. Right. All right. Second thing that gets in the way, the I, is internalized beliefs. Right. And there's our right. friend Aaron Beck, right? Yes, <laughs> yes. But, but it gets back to, you know, how do we see ourselves? You know, right. who do we believe ourselves to be? Mm -hmm. um, do, we, do we see ourselves as a person who... Um, is capable of success? Do we, you know, or do we have those uh, cognitive distortions that tell us that, oh, well, you're never going to be successful. You're never right. going to be able to accomplish that. Right. Um, it's just too difficult. It's just too mm -hmm. hard to do, you know, whatever it is that you're, you're working towards doing. Those internal beliefs, you know, really can get in the way if we're not careful. That's right. Yeah, because um, um, I, it, oh, I could go on and on about yeah. internalized beliefs. But we do. We all have these beliefs about mm -hmm. ourselves. Some, some we're aware of. Right. Some we're not aware of. Right. Not completely aware of. And so we have to be careful of how of our belief system yeah. of how much control. Now, F. Yeah. F it's is something we've definitely talked about before. Is fear. Fear. Okay. Fear of m missing out or fear of a change. That's right. It, yeah. It's fear of. Um, sometimes it's fear of success. Right. You know, we. I, I've, I've mentioned one other time on this program yeah. that. 
we had a we had a program for weight reduction mm-hmm. in kids, mm-hmm. and they would start to succeed. Mm-hmm. Uh, it, about a month into the program, yeah. they would begin to succeed, and then they'd hit the panic button yeah. because their bodies were changing noticeably, and they began to get compliments, and it meant that they would. Yeah. be another level of expectation right. that, well, wait a minute, if I'm fat, nobody expects anything, right. or this is what they expect of me, but if I am if I look different and people start looking at right. me differently, so maybe I better not do this. So one can be a fear of success, the other is fear of the unknown, right. you know, that, that, yeah. that, or, or change, right. you know, fear of the unknown, or fear of change, like, what's my life going to be like? And, yeah. um, and there's there's that fear, and that sometimes gets in the way as well. Right. You know, what will I do when I accomplish this? Right. You know, and, and I had a friend recently say that, um, you know, just arrived at a point where she was thinking, um, because the fear of change was preventing right. a lot of a, a lot of decisions and a lot of things that needed to happen, and there was a lot of uh, arguably self sabotage that was happening. Right. Um, and it was it finally got to the point where it was. You know, no matter how difficult the change mm-hmm. is, no matter what the the risk is for this unknown, the fear right. that fear of the unknown, it's got to be better than where I am now. Right. And, and right. you know, hopefully you can you can get. To, hopefully you don't have to go through so much to get mm-hmm. to that point. But absolutely, you know, yeah. that that fear of change, that fear of um, the fear of the unknown, can can almost paralyze us sometimes and really lead to us making some decisions that are not in our best interest. That's right. We hear people all the time um, talk about. Um, I, don't, I don't like the word diet, but changing their eating habits. Right. Okay? And, freq- and, and there is that fear of, you mean I can't have dessert? Right. You mean I can't have pasta anymore? I can't eat bread? I can't. Mm-hmm. It's the fear of what you're going to be right. living without. And you, have to, you simply have to overcome yeah. that. Okay? And then the E is excessive need for control. Right. I struggled a little bit with this one, trying yeah. to sort, you know, what what exactly she meant by excessive need for control. Yeah. What do you, what well, do you think? The way that I took it was um, the excessive need for control is because again, when we when we don't know what the outcome is going to be, oh, okay. it, it leads us into this wandering, sometimes feeling like we're just mm-hmm. meandering through things, and we're not sure where we're going. Right. We know that um, we know what we want. Yeah. But you know there isn't the certainty that we're going to attain that. Right. And so that it, we want to control everything and once again um it is far easier to fall back into those comfort um, right. because it's easy and we know what's going to happen. We know that if we go home after work and we sit on the couch, we know that the program that we want to watch will be on. We know that we can, you know, go to Netflix right. and find something to watch. Um but if we, you know, if we decide that we're going to go to the gym after work, uh, mm-hmm. there's there's a little bit of a lack of control because how am I going to feel afterwards? How am I going? You know, what's going right. to happen? And that that lack of control there is really disconcerting for some people. That's true. It, it really goes back. I hadn't thought about it that way, but it really goes back to that first thing about you're giving something right. up. Right. You know, yeah. and so you're giving something up that you're accustomed to. Right. That you have control yeah. of. For something that you may that's something that's new so you don't know whether you're gonna have control over right. that or not right I mean, and so it's that fear that you say mm-hmm. oh maybe maybe I better not do this right because you know it like we, we there's a, a very popular lake here in um, in our hometown that uh, a lot of people will walk around it's about right. a three mile uh, path around it um, you know if you decide okay I'm gonna start doing the lake every day mm-hmm. or every you know a couple times a, a week that lack of control is, you know, what if I get halfway around the lake and I can't finish it? Right. Mm-hmm. Or I'm too tired or, you know, this or happens. Or it starts to rain or, right. you know. That, right. that lack of control, you know what, it's just so much easier just to go, go home and not, not worry about it because what I if, have control over that. I've had people say, well, what if I have to go to the bathroom? Right. You know, yeah. and, and there you are, you are, you know. And it, there's, there's multiple fears. Right. You know, there's a, and they get in the way. These yep. fears stand in the way. Because remember, your brain is always having this battle, battle about, yeah. uh, you better not do that, right. okay? And, and so it gets in the way. Now, these four elements, there's yeah. these four elements, L-I-F-E, are just a part of who we are. Right. They're acquired during childhood, mm-hmm. okay? And they're not even part of our conscious awareness. Right. M- many times, we don't even know why yeah. we're self-sabotaging. Because these things sort of operate, these four things, fear and worry, and yeah. they operate in the background. Right. Okay. Right. We're not fully conscious of their 
influence. Well, they're, they're, they're there to keep us safe. They're there right. to, to protect us and to, right. you know, because again, we, we talked about this recently on the podcast that, you know, our biology isn't all that different than it right. was, you know, 2000, 3000 years ago. Right. Um, and so the world was very, was much smaller then. And so you didn't, there wasn't a lot of new things that you had to do back then. <laughs> right. And so, you know, if you imagine being a cave person and, and you're thinking, you know what, I'm going to go to a new region. I'm going to go to a new area that I've never been before. My goodness, that would be right. extremely anxiety provoking. But that would be about it. That would be about the extent of the newness that you would have in your life. That's right. Um, now, today, you know, there's so much that, that's new and so many things that, you know, that, that are that we have to work to change and to adjust and to, you know, to do to have a happy, healthy life. You know, you mentioned the cave person. Yeah. <laughs> I'm thinking that's a good example, really, because you have this cave person who migrates to a new place yeah. and he sees a red berry growing on a bush, a yeah. cluster of red berries. He's starving, right? Yeah. So he's thinking, I'm really hungry, but it could kill, you know, yeah. it's going to either sustain me or kill. Right. That's where this comes from. Right. You know, do, do I satisfy this or do I satisfy right. this? Right. And that's what we bring with us. Right. That we bring that same brain with us. Right. That we're always struggling between, do I want to do this or should right. I fear that or should I be cautious of that? Yeah, absolutely. Right. So don't be too, what we're saying today is as you enter the holiday season, don't be too hard on yourselves. Right. Uh, this is a, a struggle that all of us go through. It's built into our DNA. Yeah. So don't don't be surprised that things are as difficult as they are. It's it's your brain's way of taking care of you. Absolutely, okay. absolutely. So and, and look for those strengths and use your strengths to right. to overcome. We'll, we'll talk more about that in another podcast. I think we um, should. Maybe, yeah, yeah. So. How do we as we go through this holiday season, we'll revisit this issue. Absolutely. Okay. So all right, that is it for today. Until next time, stay happy, stay healthy, and forget to be afraid. Thank you.